This is an exponentials and logarithms question. Give it a go first. If you get stuck on anything, then just look through the video for hints that I provide on each part. So for part A, um, we're trying to show that A is equal to this. So then what we want to do is, with this equation here, you want to group together the two terms on the left-hand side, the log A minus B. Group them together using a rule, a log rule. And then once you have log of something is equal to log of something else, then you can cancel out the logs. Once you've got rid of the logs, then you want to rearrange for A. So with the left-hand side of the equation, we can use the division rule. So we have, let's write this out, log A minus log B is equal to log A minus B. So with the left-hand side, we can use the division rule, so this becomes log A all over B, and the right-hand side keep as is. And now that we have this, log of something is equal to log of something, we can cancel out the logs, and that's by doing 10 to the power of both sides, because 10 to the power of something and log of something, or log to the base 10 of something, are inverse operations, so they cancel out. You don't have to write the 10 to the power of both sides, you can just um, get rid of the logs if you have it in this form of log of something is equal to log of something else. So we get a over b is equal to a minus b. And now, now the rearranging starts. So we're trying to get make a the subject, so I will bring the b to the left-hand side, and I will bring the a, my, a over b to the right-hand side. And then I will factorize. So take out the a. This becomes 1 minus 1 over b. So if you didn't get to this step, uh, try it from here and see if you can now rearrange for this. But if you weren't sure on this step, because I imagine quite a few students might stumble at this particular part, how to uh, rearrange it for a. I think what I would do first is, with what we have in this bracket, I would make a common denominator. So I'm going to put that on the left-hand side as well. This becomes a times b minus 1 all over b. Um, and then this is then equal to b. And then we can times both sides by b. So that's basically bringing this b to the right-hand side. And then finally, we can divide both sides by b minus 1. And that's our answer for part A. So for part B, write down the full restriction on the value of B. I think this is where probably a lot of students would trip up to explain exactly what the restriction on the value of B is. We're already given some restrictions here. A is bigger than B, it's bigger than 0. So I think you want to think about the fact that, first of all, whenever you're doing logs of something, that something must be positive. So if you look at this equation, we then know that A must be positive, B must be positive, and also A minus B must be positive. So if you think about that, you then should be able to see why this must be true. And if you can see why this must be true, then when you look at the equation that we have here, this gives us some extra constraints for B. And once you've, and those extra constraints for B, you'd have to consider to get the answer. Okay, so I'll first talk about why this must be the case. So we're doing log of A, log of B. So it makes sense why A must be bigger than zero, and also B must be bigger than zero. And we can see that here. We can see that A is, A is bigger than B, and both of those things are bigger than zero. Okay, so we have that. But why does A have to be bigger than B? Well, that comes into this part here. So A minus B, what's inside that logarithm, must also be positive. And therefore, A must be bigger than B. And when you combine these three things, we end up with that inequality there. But that's not our answer. That's just, well, repeating what's in the question already. But if we have an understanding of that, that should then allow us to tackle the actual question itself. What is the full restriction on the value of B? Well, the new bit of information that we've worked out in this question is this, that A is equal to B squared over B minus 1. We know that A is positive. So if we know that A is positive, that also means that B squared over B minus 1 must also be positive. 
So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna rub this stuff out here. This is now our working, what we have here. A is positive, therefore B squared over B minus one must be positive. And if you're squaring something, well, first of all, we already know that B is positive, so B squared must be positive as well. But that's also because we're squaring it. So squaring anything makes it positive. Um, that's positive. So for this to be positive, that must mean with the denominator must also be positive. Because if you have a positive number divided by another number, and that whole thing must be positive, then that must mean that the denominator is also positive. So b minus 1 is greater than 0, and that means that b is greater than 1. And our old constraint for b was that b had to be bigger than 0. But now we know that b also has to be bigger than 1. Well, the combination of these two inequalities, if b has to be bigger than 0 and b also has to be bigger than 1, well, that if you were to write that as one inequality, that just means that b is bigger than 1. So that will be our answer.